Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to purify sulfuric acid. The point is that it has become very difficult to buy some pure sulfuric acid in stores, maybe because of regulations, I don't know why, but when we buy something that is labeled as sulfuric acid and there is no list of ingredients, we have the right to assume that this is pure sulfuric acid, but it is not. How do I know that? Well, that's very easy. Let me open it. As you can see, this product is red. So that's definitely not pure sulfuric acid, which is supposed to be colorless. So we are going to purify it and the problem is that I don't know what polluant, uh, I don't know what other ingredients they put in there, but we can, uh, there are two possibilities. If I heat this up, either the polluants, the, if I heat this up, either these ingredients will boil off before the acid does or after. It, we would be very unlucky if they boil at the same temperature as the sulfuric acid. So what I'm going to do is a simple distillation and I'm going to see if these ingredients come out as um, if they come out before the sulfuric acid does or after so we will see what happens and then uh, we can see uh, in the in the jars where we collect the product we can see whether we have to keep it or or discard it okay now uh, I'm wearing some uh, protective equipment I'm going to wear gloves and also some goggles usually when I uh, work with sulfuric acid I'm not too careful about it of course I don't want it to be in, to go in my eyes but it's okay if you have uh, some sulfuric acid that come onto your hands you just simply you simply rinse them off rinse your your hand off right away and that's fine uh, I get some sulfuric acid on my hands every every day and I'm perfectly fine okay but the difference here today in this experiment is that we will be dealing with very hot sulfuric acid so it's a completely different story it's extremely dangerous not only because it is acid not only because it will be really hot but because both of these facts it's hot sulfuric acid that makes it much stronger so we have to be very careful about it in addition although this is pyrex uh, we are going to deal with uh, relatively high temperature the boiling temperature of sulfuric acid is 337 degrees so that's uh, that's a high stress on the Pyrex and we must keep in mind that it can shatter anytime so we have to be very careful with this okay so uh, now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put some uh, broken glass pieces in this uh, flask uh, it's in order to avoid some uh, burst um, we this thing will be um, will be overheated and it may no, not boil for a while and then all of a sudden it, it may make some very big bubbles that could shatter the glass so by putting some uh, broken uh, broken pieces of glass that will help the the boiling um, process to be smoother and avoid some big bursts
So here I, th I have some pieces from an old condenser and I'm going simply going to put them in the flask. Now the advantage of using glass is that it won't react with the sulfuric acid. Right. And now I'm going to set up the apparatus for a simple distillation. All right, so this is ready. And uh, I'm not going to run some cold water in the condenser because anyway sulfuric acid will condense very easily it will actually be hard to make it vaporize so as soon as it will go into the condenser it will condense on its own so there's no need to run cold water in it now also uh, this will produce uh, a lot of toxic gases so when this will be hot I will not uh, record my voice in real time because I will simply hold my my br my breath and I will add uh, some comments when I edit the video okay so right now it's okay there are no fumes yet I'm going to turn the mantle on and well we are going to see what is going on as time passes um, also it is useful to put some aluminum foil around the flask that will help it to reach the boiling temperature. Now we have to be careful because of course we want to open and see if it's boiling but that's dangerous because when we when this thing will be boiling and we open there is some cold air that will go onto the flask and the sudden difference in temperature could shatter the glass so we have to be very careful when we do this we have to look very carefully and definitely wear some uh, eye protection all right well let's wait for this to reach the boiling temperature and then we will see what we get so here this is uh, what I collected um, after the distillation and this is actually uh, it is acidic but not much so let's see with this test okay it turns it turns red but it's not a very deep red I mean the if it was very uh, a very deep red that would be a pH one. Well, here it's not it's not even one. It's maybe two. Okay, so that's definitely not concentrated sulfuric acid that we have here. The pH of concentrated sulfuric acid is zero point one. So here we have about two. So basically, what we have here is water that boiled off uh, of the acid which means that we actually concentrated what was left in the flask and now the good news is that here is what was left in the flask it completely cleared out so i guess that all the fumes that uh, escaped they were actually carrying with them the all the contaminant and it seems that we are left with a rather clean sulfuric acid so we are going to make some tests in order to make sure of that but first let me decant this because remember i put some uh, some uh, pieces of glass in order to help um, the um, the boiling of the acid okay so let me transfer into this beaker and 
we are going to make four tests in order to determine whether what we have is concentrated sulfuric acid. And actually here I can already see the result of the first test. So what is this first test? It is the fact that the solution that we have, we can see that it's relatively viscous. And this is precisely how concentrated sulfuric acid, 98%, looks like. It's viscous. Now here in my flask, you see, I have the glass in the bottle. Okay. So I believe that this is a relatively pure sulfuric acid, and we are going to check this. Uh, so first, we just check that... Um, the, um, it is viscous as it should be a second test that we can do is to measure the mass density and see whether it corresponds to the mass density of concentrated sulfuric acid so in order to measure the mass density of the this thing I'm going to um, I'll first zero my scale with the, the weight of this empty cylinder. So, okay, it's set on zero. And now I'm going to add 50 milliliters of this product. Of course remove this in order to get the correct weight so okay we can't see on the camera maybe I can try to move the camera here we have it's not easy to move it we have 99 point oh nine i don't know why it doesn't show up on the camera let me try to zoom in 99.09 .09 grams all right so 91.09 .09 divided by 50 that gives a mass density of 1.82 grams per mil and uh, the point is that if you look up online you will find that the mass density of pure 98 percent sulfuric acid is 1.83 grams per mil so we are very close so this is a, a good indication that what we have here is really concentrated sulfuric acid okay so that was our second test now let us see a third test so as a third test let us see how it reacts with a napkin okay so just gonna pour a few drops and i'm probably gonna get some of my hands as usual oops All right let us see yeah you see how the napkin is getting eaten yep look at this so this is typical with sulfuric acid and now maybe the the last test we can do is to see how it reacts with sugar so i'm going to mix this thing with sugar in proportion one to one 
So let's do this. Let me stir. And let us wait for a few seconds. Okay, it's, it starts to boil. Something is going to happen. So what is happening here is that the sulfuric acid acts as a dehydrant. It takes water from the sugar molecules and what is left is pure carbon. So this confirms that what we have is concentrated sulfuric acid and hopefully it is nearly pure. So I would say that this is um, a total success and what we have seen is that actually the distillation of the acid wasn't necessary. All we had to do uh, was to boil off the water and the impurities too. And what was left in the flask is the purified sulfuric acid. If you like this video, please give it a like and I would appreciate if you can share it on your social networks. Please register to my channel if you haven't done so yet, and you will discover some other tutorials. And uh, I thank you for watching.